Hey everybody, it's Kelly Notaris here. I am the author of the book you were born to write, everything you need to finally get your wisdom onto the page and into the world. This is a book that I have waited 20 years to write. Um, I have been a book editor for 20 years. I've worked at some of the biggest publishing companies in the United States, edited books for um, many others. And I'm here today because this week is our finding the time to write week. And I really want to help you guys find the time to write your book. And my reason for that is because I know that if you're watching this video and you're part of the Hay House, hi Ornella, um, part of the Hay House community, you are probably writing a book that I call transformational nonfiction. Now, some of you may actually be writing fiction and that's totally fine, poetry, children's books, cookbooks, any number of things. But many, many people who are Hay House fans and people who, who like this page, understand that the the work they are meant to do in the world is, is here to transform some lives, right? So I call it transformational nonfiction. After uh, Facebook Live the other day, I got a really great email from a friend of mine saying, oh, transformational nonfiction, that's the word I've been looking for. And um, so I just wanna offer that to you. That's sort of a rebrand on uh, what might be called self-help, personal growth, um, memoir, inspirational memoir, things like that. Hi, hi, Sean in Atlanta. Hi, Isaac. Um, so, I wanted to talk to you guys today a little bit more about how to find time to write that book because that book is so important. I deeply, deeply believe that if you have the desire to write a book and specifically something that's meant to help people's lives get better, that you really need to do it, right? So um, so my hope is that the, the tips I'm going to offer you today are going to help you with that. <clears throat> Before we uh, jump in, I actually just want to um, say to those folks who may be watching from Florida and to all of our friends who are in Florida and Georgia and the Carolinas that we are, we're watching you. We know how hard this is right now with Hurricane Michael and we're sending our prayers. So I've been thinking a lot about that this morning and wanted to say that here. Again, um, the books that we are writing, those of us who are in the transformational space are meant to help people and um, they're meant to ease suffering. And so I sort of bring into my heart when I come to you, the, um, the knowledge I have of what's happening out there in our world right now, which is, is not an easy time. And you guys are here just like me, I think, to bring ease to that. And I bring that up first and foremost. Um, great, yes, awesome, thanks everybody. Um, so I, I bring that up first and foremost because the first tip that I wanna talk to you about, which I devote an entire chapter to in the book you were born to write, is finding your motivation for the book. Because again, this week is about finding the time to write, which is very important. Obviously time is uh, very, very precious and we all have a lot of different options for how we spend our time, especially in the modern world. And finding time to write is not something that, it, it, writing time doesn't just show up, so I'll start there. It doesn't just show up, it's not like, oh, right, you know, today everyone in my life is telling me I have to, you know, sit down and write this book. No, they're telling you you need to do all sorts of other things like work and cook dinner and, you know, take your grandkids to soccer practice and whatever it is that you do with your time. Um, very few people are gonna be saying to you, I need you to write, you really need to write for me today. Um, but the world at large actually does need you to write for them, right? We, we need the wisdom and the story that you have. And if you can just imagine how much the world will change, people's lives will change when your book is out there, that can be first and foremost, I think one of the most motivating factors. So the tip that I wanna to talk to you about today is finding your why. Okay. What is the reason that you're writing this book? If you are having a hard time finding the time to write the book, it may be that you just haven't quite yet found your mission statement for the book. Because those of us who are meant to write these sorts of transformational books, we have a mission. There's some mission that we have in the world. And um, I will say that for me and the book you're born to write, I was at a Hay House Writers Workshop in uh, April of 2017. And I had a lot on my plate at that time. Any of you who've been following me at all know that I've had a, a pretty intense couple of years. And it was not a time where it made sense for me to say, oh, today I'm gonna, I'm gonna start writing a book. But something happened at that workshop, and I'm not exactly sure why or how, but I turned around and looked at the 200 plus people that were sitting in that room, and I thought, they need what I know. I've, I've been a book editor for 20 years. This is what I've dedicated my life to learning, is how to write a book, how to get it published, 
whether you're traditionally publishing or self-publishing, um, and how to get the word out about the book once you have it in the world. And I know that information and the people at that writer's workshop needed it. Now, I'd been at many writer's workshops up until that point. I have spoken at them since 2013, but for some reason that that particular workshop, it hit me. Now's the time to write my book. And so I wanna find out if you guys can just look into your own heart and ask, where was the moment when I knew I wanted to write this book? How did it first land in me? And from working with a lot of authors like you, I know that it could be a really long time. I mean, many, many of the authors that I work with, especially those who are working on transformational nonfiction, have known since they were very young that they were meant to write a book and they wanted it to. Um, so yes, Ornella, it's great. <laughs> Spirit does give us the nudges at exactly the right time. I always say that books are born on a schedule, that there's no mistake to when your book is meant to come out into the world. So. That's another thing you can sort of keep in there if you're starting to feel like, ah, oh, I'm not writing my book. The time will come and it will be the right time. Hi, Dorit. Um, it'll be the right time to actually write that book. And so you can, you can trust that. You can really, really trust that. And if the time is now, having a motivational statement or a mission statement for your book can be one of the factors that will actually have you get it done. So again, go back to the moment where you knew that you wanted to write that book, where you knew that there was a book that you were actually born to write and that it needed to come out some time soon and and go sit with that moment and remind yourself what was happening and where your heart was and where your attention was because that will point you toward the motivation that sparked and lit that fire under you and then I would encourage you to actually write a mission statement for your book what is the purpose of having it in the world that you can actually use as a guiding light or a north star throughout the process of writing a book? Because there's just no two ways about it. Writing a book takes time. It takes time, it takes energy. It is, um, it's one of the greatest uh, births I've ever had myself, both in books that I've written for other people as a collaborative writer and then also my own book. And I've watched many, many hundreds literally of authors go through the process and I can tell you that it is it is the making of you in the process of writing that book. And it's also something that is, is meant to be out there in the world for some really good reason. And if you can find that reason, set it as your North Star, it will bring you back to the notebook or the laptop or the iPad where you're writing that book on a daily basis. So I suggest writing it down, figuring out your mission statement. How <laughs> Linda, can I write it for you? I can't, I can't. I do, um, I do actually have a passion for helping people figure out what the hook of their book should be, which is in a way a North Star for the book as well. The hook is the one to three line message that you want to get across in the book. And um, that is something that I, I do a lot of, helping people figure out what the right hook is for their book. But when it comes to the motivation to sit down and write, I can't do it for you. It has to come from within. Because again, it's it's something that has to happen on an everyday basis. And for there to be so, uh, something that gets you back to that computer every single day, it has to be pretty important to you. So um, that's my first recommendation is figure out what is your why and write a mission statement for it. Maybe post it above your computer or wherever it is that you write. Um, write it on your the home screen of your um, smartphone or whatever you're looking at a lot. Put it on the refrigerator door so you remember who you're writing for, why they need what you know, and how you um, will feel once your book is out in the world. We are motivated as human beings by feelings more than thoughts. So we can think about how cool it would be to, you know, be in our favorite bookstore and have uh, all of our friends there listening to us read from our book that we finally, you know, created in the world. That's great. But the feeling sense of of having that book, that's what I'm after. That's what I want you to look inward and feel. What is the thing, the feeling that you are most motivated by? And um, this leads into something I wanna talk about that I use in every aspect of my life, not just in terms of my writing, but it's something I call the nine out of 10 rule, <laughs> or sometimes I call it nine or above. And that is where I, as somebody who's really busy, and I know all of you are too, I had, and also a bit of a people pleaser on my way. Hi, Linda, thanks for the heart. Um, you know, I, I, a people, people pleasers, it's hard to say no when somebody wants to spend time with you or wants you to help them with something or whatever it might be. And, I had to, at a certain point, start um, the painful process of pulling away from things that did not ping my radar at a nine out of 10 or above. 
And so that's something I just want to offer you when you're looking at your book writing process. Are you operating with your writing at a nine out of 10 or above? If you're not, you need to find a new why right? The nine out of 10, absolutely a hundred percent needs to be there for you to sit down every single day and write the book. It's just, it's just not possible to write a book without it um, because it takes too much time and energy to do. So my suggestion to you is to ask yourself, where can you find the motivation that is a nine or above to write this book? Is it the person that you imagine reading it on the other end, the audience that you're writing it for? Is it maybe your child who you want to know that dreams can come true and that um, perseverance is possible? Is it um, that you just yourself need that self-confidence boost? You're somebody who has had a lot of ideas in your life, but you haven't actually executed on them fully to completion. And now is the time. It's a nine out of 10 to sit down because you need to know what you are capable of. Whatever it is, I'm going to ask you to just go in there and again, find it and feel it and use that as part of your mission statement. Okay. So that's the inspiration half of this, um, of this uh, Facebook Live. Now I wanna to talk to you about execution or implementation because inspiration is so important and some of us are really good at it, inspiration and not so good at implementation. Others of us are the opposite, where we know how we would write the book if only we knew exactly what book we wanted to write. Um, if only we really understood what it was gonna do in the world, but we, we have a hard time visioning that. It's not, that's not the way that our minds work. And I'm actually one of those people, to be totally honest with you, I'm a, extremely organized author. Um, I'm an extremely organized person. And so that's one of the gifts that I have to offer uh, my clients and other and authors through the book and, and these Facebook lives and such is my understanding of organizational structure, because it's not the way many people's minds work. So I want to talk to you about something that is, um, I, I don't want, I hope it doesn't feel elementary. It's simple, but I'm not gonna say it's easy. Um, I even printed something out that I'm gonna show you. So I have, uh, in my book, I walk through an exhaustive seven-step process for creating a personalized writing plan, okay? Your personalized writing plan. The seven steps I broke out <laughs> from something that you could literally ask a kindergartner to do and they would be able to do it in one step. But I needed to break it out into seven steps. Why? Because micro movements, are easier to make and they make it easier to overcome certain types of resistance than saying, I'm just going to do this whole thing right now, which is something I talked about in the Facebook live um, earlier this week. When we scare ourselves into believing we have to do the whole thing right now, it, it actually can keep us from meeting our goals. So I have created this seven step process for per creating a personalized writing plan, but I'm going to tell you right now how to do it in one step. Okay. Are you ready? You create a chart. Hey guys, it's a chart. <laughs> this is a chart that probably a kindergartner could have made. I mean, we, we have it looking all pretty and such, but um, this, this is a chart that is very simple. Um, I'm gonna sound like a first grade teacher here. In column one, we put the day of the week. I think you guys know what day of the week is. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, yeah, et cetera. You know what I'm talking about. In the second column is a little harder. Your commitment. What is the commitment that you will make to write on that day of the week? So here I have things ranging from 15 minutes of writing up to 90 minutes of writing. You may have a word count. You may say, I'm going to write 200 words on weekdays and on weekends, I'm going to write 500 words. It depends on sort of how, what your writing process is like and what's easiest for you, but you've got to make a commitment. And this is where the tough love of this, how to find the time to write week comes in. Because the truth is that there, there, as I said in the beginning of this, this video, there's not going to be a lot of pressure in your life to sit down and write from other people. That has to come from within. It has to come from your personal commitment. All right. So, um, great. I like you, Gail. Eight is not enough going for 10. Yeah. All right. Um, but I did say nine out of 10. Sometimes you gotta do things that are nine out of 10. I know it's like, I wanna just do everything 10 out of 10. But the fact is that there are things in life that are just not what, which I saw like, totally fun, but the ultimate outcome is something that we want at a 10 out of 10. But in the process, we might have to do something that's a little bit less than a 10 out of 10 in order to get there. I and mean, that's the way I feel about, um, you know, all sorts of practices like exercise or um, meditation or whatever. Like I'm not like, oh, 10 out of 10 to go sit on the meditation cushion this morning. And yet I do it because I know I'm going to feel a 10 out of 10 on the other side, right? So you have to be able to work with that. Okay, so back here, speaking of um, creating 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, here's your commitment column, 
right here. I, I mean, this you can make this uh, by hand. <laughs> I happened to use, um, I think when I first made this chart, I used Microsoft Word, just made a chart, but you can totally make it on a piece of paper with a marker. Um, next column is what I call time slot. Very important. This has to go into your schedule. Okay. It's, it's something that I call in my book, writing like it's your job. Okay. Writing like it's your job doesn't mean you're going to write eight hours a day, five days a week. No, I don't know anyone who could do that. Maybe some like master writers can do that. I can't, I can write for a maximum of three hours a day and basically writing is my career. Okay. So I can write for three hours a day. You probably, you, if you haven't had a lot of practice at it, don't even try for three hours a day. Try for 15 minutes a day. Try for 20 minutes a day. Try for an hour a day once you get a little bit of traction, okay? Um, but I wanna know when you're gonna do it. And I want you, when I say write like it's your job, it needs to be held in your heart and your psyche as something that is so important, other things will have to wait. And this is the place where I think many of us get tripped up around finding the time to write because we think that writing isn't essential. So we have to do it after we get all the essentials taken care of. And I'm not saying like, don't eat, don't, don't take care of your kids or whatever. You got to do all those things. That's true. But there are other things that are non-essential that each of us does every single day. We veg out a lot. We, you know, scroll through Facebook, we watch TV, we do all sorts of things that, that in time slots where we could be writing. I mean, I often, when I'm on Facebook, I actually check when I, the time when I go in and then I don't remember to check as I'm scrolling and then I don't remember to check again and I look back and it's been 20 minutes. Okay, what could I have been doing for that 20 minutes that might have been uh, more personally impactful and motivating and how about impactful for the world? How about impactful for people who need the wisdom that I have? right? The story that I've lived, just like you. There are people that need to hear it. There are people that need to feel like they're not alone and they need the methodology that you used to overcome whatever trauma you might have had or to teach your, hi Kai, um, to teach your uh, clients how to work through issues or whatever healing you have gone through personally or have helped other people go through. There are people out there who need to hear that. Do, does the world need me to be scrolling through Facebook? You know, I mean, here we are, we're on Facebook. Facebook actually is a very helpful tool. And I know that I spend more time on there than I need to, right? And so I, I'm just encouraging you to find the place in your life where you are doing something that is actually not that important and replace it with writing and replace it with, a t put it in a time slot. So again, time slot, <laughs> I keep showing this to you. And I think this actually probably comes out backward on this video because I know Facebook Live sometimes comes out backward. But um, if you can read backwards, it does in fact say time slot <laughs> on that column. So an example um, I put on here, I just made this up, right? Mondays, whoever's doing this um, is going to write 15 minutes at 6 a.m. because the kids are still asleep, right? Um, 45 minutes on Tuesday at 12.15 p.m. during their lunch break. <laughs> Um, me on, let's see, Friday night at 7 p.m. during me time, right? Whatever space you can put it into your schedule, I, I recommend you both putting it on a chart like this that you can refer back to, but also actually putting it in your schedule. Whether you're using one of these um, fun paper schedules that have come back because everybody went electronic and now everybody wants to go back to paper. So there's all these really cool books out there and you can write in what time you're going to be doing what, what activity, whether you write it in by hand or you put it in your phone into your, you know, whatever your um, calendar system is that you use on your phone, you, you put it in there as if it were your job to do it. Right? So I know I use my calendar every single day a lot. <laughs> and it's usually for meetings or things like Facebook lives or um, any number of things. I also put my writing schedule in my calendar. When I am writing something that needs my attention, which I am right now because I'm launching this book, comes out November 13th. I have a lot of writing to write between me and between now and then. Um, I, it's in my schedule. It's in my calendar. I write like it's my job. Now, in my case, it kind of is my job. So that, you know, may be what it is, but it, it has to be like it's yours or you're not going to do it right? We have to write like it's something that's actually important. <laughs> and it is actually important. So, and then finally, the key to success on your personalized writing chart is the success column. If you can see it, I know it's going to be backwards, but check out the, the check marks. <laughs> I put in check marks for you. I, I went ahead and put in the check marks for you um, because I believe that you're actually going to write during your, your time commitment. 
That kind of a chart, there's something magic that happens when we commit our uh, intentions to paper. And probably many of you who would be on the Hay House page know that already. You've already done that. You've uh, maybe at the beginning of the year, you pick a word for the year and you write it down or you um, make a vision board or you write down you know, in your journal the 10 goals that you have. The, writing something down changes it. It's, it's in a way it gets into the, the subconscious in a way that we know deeply that there's actually something important happening here, that we need to put attention on it and it doesn't have to be necessarily the conscious mind that's putting the attention on it, it can be the unconscious mind. So commit it to paper. In fact, both of the tips that I've given you today are committed to paper. One is to actually write your, your mission statement for your book and your why. What is the reason that you're writing this book? Who do you want to help? How is it going to improve the world? How is it going to make your life better? How is it going to teach you who you are? What are the reasons why you're writing this book? Why is it so important to you? Why is it a nine out of 10? And then writing down when you're going to do it. So the, the inspiration and the execution, and you kind of have to have both right? You can't have one or the other. There's in a way, there's sort of the yin and the yang, right? The inspiration being the yin, it's being the, the vision, it's being the feeling, it's being the experience and the yang being, okay, and this is when I'm going to actually make it happen. And I think many of us sort of skew to one side of that or another. I skew more to the yang side. Honestly, I'm a very organized person. I'm a very productive person, but there are a lot of people that I know and love who skew more to the yin side. And I get to learn a lot from them in the process. But if they want to write a book, they're going to have to actually bring in some of that young. So today I gave you two tips, one for each personality type. I recommend all of you do all of them since we both, all of us contain the yin and the yang inside and do both of them, put them down on paper and watch what happens. My hope is that it encourages you to find in your schedule the time that the important time you need to really accomplish the mission that you are here to write about. Because again, if you weren't here on this page, um, or if you are here on this page and you are somebody who wants to write transformational nonfiction, we need what you know. We need what you know. All right, friends. So I want to just tell you um, a couple things. Number one is that if, if these tips were helpful to you, I'm going to be giving even more tips um, on Wednesday, October 17th with Reed Tracy, who's the CEO of Hay House and literally, I think, the smartest man in publishing. And um, he and I are going to be talking about a topic that uh, we call how to write a book in a weekend, which is, of course, uh, a little facetious, um, but there is actual truth in it as well. And, and we're going to be talking about a shortcut method because the writing process is long and there are some ways that you can actually um, cut out a certain amount of effort and, and actually a certain amount of trial and difficulty. So um, be sure to tune in for that. Um, that's going to be on Wednesday, October 17th. And the link is below. So you can find um, the registration link in the comment or in the um, info below this video. And then I I also want to encourage you to join the Hay House Writers Studio Facebook page. There's also a link below. Um, it's a page where writers can actually get together and talk about the process of writing and inspire one another. And it's been a real inspiration for me to just watch what's happening on that page. It's really quite wonderful. So I encourage you all to join over there. And um, more than anything, I encourage you to really keep your writing goals, to do what you can to actually find that why and make, make it like your job to write this book because we need it. Our world needs it today. All right. Blessings, everyone. Good luck on your writing journey and happy writing today. Bye.